So I'm going to talk about innovation in Africa. And as is customary when you talk about Africa, you have to have this picture of, of Africa from space. And everyone says, look, it's the dark continent, and it's a bad thing. But I think it's a good thing, because we live in an age where we don't have electricity to waste. Um, and innovation that happens in Africa is just truly remarkable. This is something called a dollar. And Eric Merrifield is the most famous inventor or innovator that you've never heard of. In 1963, in a little town in South Africa, there was a huge storm that ripped up the harbor. And he came up with this from, the, from a child's toy that let him uh, uh, save the harbors. You just dump them in the harbors. The waves crash over. It's used in every harbor in the world. Um, so. Like the map shows, there's very little electricity. The UN says one and a half billion people in the world don't have access to electricity. In Africa, it's something like 70% of people off the grid, something like 500 million people. So how do you keep something? Oh, there's the Dulleses. That's Robin Island in the background, by the way. How do you keep something cool without electricity? Well, this is a great Nigerian example of what's called a pot within a pot. You get two pots, you fill them with sand in between, cover it with water, and the natural way is that the heat extracts from the middle of the pot and keeps this cool, the food cool. Now, we're talking about uh, rural environments with no electricity. So, in the last 10 years, six of the fastest growing economies in the world have been in Africa. We know this is true because the economists told us. And all of this is being done because there's a resource boom. We've got gold, we've got minerals, we've got stuff underneath it. Africa has 14% of the world's population, most of them under the age of 30. And we are where China was when its boom years began. So I come from Johannesburg, which is a mining town. And I think that the gold of today is mobile. People like to call Africa a mobile first continent, but I'm telling you that Africa is a mobile only continent. And what we see in Africa is the purest form of innovation, innovation out of necessity. We're not talking about angry birds, we're talking about things that people do to make their lives better. So this is not just a cell phone, these are the two most popular phones in Africa. It's a radio, it's a torch, and it's also a computer. That is the first experience that hundreds of millions of Africans will see the internet on for the first time. If you think of uh, wireless broadband as a car speeding on a highway, then SMS is the paint on the road, and about five layers below that is a thing called USSD. And that is the technology that you can use on a phone like that to get Gmail, to send Gmail, to read Facebook, to update your Facebook status. So I think mobile is an enabler. It's the 21st century equivalent of the railroad. The difference is it's a bullet train. The most vulnerable people, I think, in society are young women. Given the taboo of AIDS and that it's, it's, it's not proper to ask an older information about sex or uh, child prevention, there are fantastic services that send information straight to young women who are able to find out just the basics, real information, not old wives' tales, things that can save their lives. And you can do this by SMS, or there's an even cleverer system uh, that was developed in Cape Town called Mixit. It's a remarkable story in its own right. They call themselves Africa's largest social network. They've got 50 million users, which is twice as many as, as Facebook. And there's a guy called Marlon Parker, whose brother was a drug addict, and he started using this chat system that costs a few cents a message to speak to other drug addicts, to get them off it. Uh, it's frontline support for people who are uh, in this environment. They don't even have the money to make a phone call, let alone send an SMS. It's truly remarkable. It's a picture of a farmer in Ghana. You, you know, he can't Google the price of corn. He doesn't know anything about commodities. But there's services that tell him which market he can go to and get the best price for his farm. You know, not Afri Angry Birds, but something that will make his life better. We've all heard about M-Pesa, which is this fantastic example of mobile money. Something like 80% uh, of adults in Africa are unbanked. 326 million people don't have a bank card. But what they do have is an SMS, a, a SIM card. And, and, the, and Africa has 650 million cell phones. It's growing faster than any other region. M-Pesa is just this amazing thing where 10% of the Kenyan GDP goes through M-Pesa in increments of less than $20. But there's an even more informal methodology in Africa, and that is airtime. These are slips that you can buy. That's the equivalent of $4. That's $8. You send that 12-digit number to somebody, and you can actually pay them. It's quite remarkable, and it's a hidden currency that is, is 
an example of the way, amazing way out of necessity, people have found a way to share money with other people. Even more clever is this thing called the please call me. So the first line is the please call me. The rest is an is a, a advertising message from the network that users, they make the money from it. But it's kind of like a way people can send messages to each other. Send two, then one, then another two, and it is a predetermined message. It's kind of like a digital Morse code. And the poorest of the poor who can't make a phone call, who can't afford SMSs, are able to do this. Pay as you go is a brilliant business model. It wasn't invented in South Africa, it was pioneered here. As, uh, by Vodacom to use cell phone. This is a Zimbabwe example of pay as you go sell, uh, solar. You buy this uh, station, you buy to rent, it charges uh, lights during the day, you can sell the spare capacity to your neighbor. Um, and, uh, and how do you bring the internet to Africa? This is a great thing called the mesh potato, invented by a man called Steve Song, that as long as you connect a whole bunch of them together, they can share the internet with people, and as long as one of them is touching the, the internet, you can get out of there. So all of this just shows the incredible innovation that people in, in, in Africa have come up with. I don't believe that the gold is under the ground, I believe that we are the gold. And this is not that catchy phrase, innovation at the edge. This is innovation over the edge.